Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to our service today and a particularly big welcome if you're joining us for the first time. It is lovely to have you with us. Just to say we're going to be having a meetup on Zoom after our service today. As we can't meet to have coffee, this is the next best thing. So whether you're joining us for the first time or you come every week, you'll be more than welcome to come and have some social time with us after the service. To be able to do that, if you look at our website, parishofcove.org.uk, then you'll find the details of our Zoom meetup. There'll be the code for the Zoom meeting and the password. And the idea is we'll all come into one meeting and then split off into breakout rooms so we can chat a little bit easier with a few other people. So that's happening at 10.45 after the service and the details are at parishofcove.org.uk and then look for our Zoom meeting. Also today at 6.30 this evening, we have our Ignite service and that's gonna be happening online on our Facebook page. If you've never been and you would like to see a little bit about what it's about, then I encourage you to do that. That's at half past six tonight, so do come along. It's a slightly different style of worship than we have this morning. So do check that out, half past six tonight. And I want to also say a huge thank you to Gordon Thomas and to Andrew Hyde and to all the others that were involved in Christian Aid Week last week. Whether you hosted a Zoom coffee, you made jam, you delivered plants or you made a donation, it has all made such a difference. And we know that that money and the times and the effort that you gave for fundraising will go to supporting those around our world who really need it right now. So thank you and we will give you an update when we know how much we've raised later on. Talking of money, a uh, few people have been asking me over the last couple of months about how we still give. I'm pleased to let you know that we've now set up online giving. So if you did want to give, you can do that through the website parishofcove.org.uk and you'll be able to find details of that. And a big thank you as well to those who are continuing to send checks in the post. That is really helpful to us. Um, but also giving is part of our worship. So it's great that we're able to continue to do that in this time. And then last but not least, we are having another lockdown showcase. So if you missed out last time and you feel that you've got a poem to share, a song to sing, maybe a painting or a picture to show or even a magic trick, then we would love to, 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 to share that with you really. So do get in contact with Tony Beadle and he'll be able to give you all the details for how you can get involved with that. And that's quite a few notices to begin us off this morning. So let's take a moment of quiet and then I will say a prayer for us as we begin. Father God, as we come to worship you now, we offer you this time, whether we are in our kitchen, our lounge, our pajamas, whether we are feeling excited and ready to worship you this morning, or actually we're feeling tired after a week of homeschooling and working from home and just being in lockdown for a long time. Lord, we pray that you will be close to us and with us now. Amen. We know that God is a God of new beginnings. And this morning, we're gonna take an opportunity to come to him in confession. And how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna say some words and there's a response for us to say as well. So when I say, Lord have mercy, you respond with Lord have mercy. And when I say Christ have mercy, you respond with Christ have mercy. Let's take a moment of quiet before I lead us. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness in our hearts. Let us examine ourselves and confess our sin. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We often fail to walk in the way of the cross. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
Let's pray. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hi, when I was asked to talk about hearing from God, I know that so many memories went through my mind and I kind of thought, how am I going to condense this into a couple of minutes? I'm going to try. So anyway, I chat to God on a regular basis. When I'm out in the car on my way to work, I would always have a chat with God and I would find that songs would come to mind, that Bible verses would come to mind and that they would relate to the situation that I was praying about. I know during lockdown I haven't been able to drive in the same way so my, my quiet times with God have had to change but when I'm out walking on my own or if I'm pottering in the garden that I will see something, that small item of beauty, that item that just reminds me of God's creation. Or again, those Bible passages come to mind and they just speak to me and they just reassure me and just remind me that God is in charge and that he loves me. I know at other times that friends have acted like as God's messengers and I have been talking to them and then they'll take time and they'll give me a considered answer. And the answer they gives me feels like it's a message from God. 
the uh, I'm thankful for the wisdoms of friends. I know that at other times that God has spoken to me in more direct ways, in more personal ways. And one of those is through pictures in my mind. On various occasions during worship or during quiet contemplation, I have seen a vivid picture. And it'll be a beautiful picture that I want to hold on to. Going back quite a while, um, when I in my early years of being a Christian, I was at a Christian conference and I saw a picture and the leader at the front then described my picture and he said that God is speaking to the person who can see this picture and he wants you to pray for other people. And over my Christian life, that is something that I have been able to do. That in some way feels alien to me because I hate standing at the front. I prefer to be in the background, but when I'm praying for people or leading prayer, I find I have a confidence and I know that comes from God. I think the final way that God has spoken to me is sometimes he has to be quite direct and he will just talk to me and he will say something. And it's kind of like, where did that voice come from? And I know before I retrained to become a play therapist, I had that experience. I mean, it's over 10 years ago now, but I was coming back from the Royal Marsden with my friend and their child. And we had been talking about the work the play therapists do there. And we were sitting silently as we were driving along the M25. And then I just heard a voice saying, Julia, I want you to do that. And it was kind of like, pardon? And yeah, I think that was God talking to me because over the past 10 years, I've had to retrain. It's been hard work, but I have done it and I have become a play therapist. But the only reason I've been able to do it is because God encouraged me to take that leap of faith. Um, to trust in him. Um, so yeah, direct voice sometimes when I actually need a, a boot, a kick to do something. So, so yeah, so God loves speaking to us. And if we're open to listening to him, if we give him the time and the space, he does speak to us. As we gather here together in your presence, as your people we acknowledge and remember, work up your hands, purpose and plan. Work like an anchor for all time as one we sing he who has promised will be faithful he who has promised will
everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. He could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love. And surely we would never cease to praise everything that, everything that, everything that has been praise the Lord, everything that, everything. Everything that has worth, praise the Lord. Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praising you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. They could see how much you're worth. Your power, your might, your endless love And surely they would never cease to praise Everything that, everything that Everything that has for praise the Lord And everything that, everything that and I'll be doing the Sunday reading today. I hope you're all well and safe. I'm reading Kings 1 chapter 19 verse 9 to 14. There he went into a cave and spent the night and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altar and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're continuing our sermon series on prayer. Last week Gemma spoke to us about praying for ourselves. And today we're thinking about how we hear from God. Our reading was about Elijah and the way in which he heard from God. So we'll have a look and see what we could learn from his example. You might like to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 9. Noise is a fact of life, isn't it? Our phones are constantly pinging with incoming messages. We shop to the accompaniment of piped music. We listen to music as we drive. At home, our TVs constantly chatter away in the background. 
and if you've got young children, you certainly don't need reminding about what noise is. And it's not only the external noise either, is it? There's all that internal noise that goes on in our heads too. Elijah's life had been pretty noisy up to this point, both externally and internally. He's had a showdown with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, in which he spectacularly demonstrated the awesome power of God. The false prophets of Baal have been slaughtered and furious Queen Jezebel has issued a death warrant on Elijah. So he's fled a hundred miles south to Beersheba. And there, at the end of his tether, Elijah begs God to take his life. But an angel of God meets with him, miraculously providing with him with food and drink. Having rested, Elijah travels on for another 40 days and ends up sheltering in a cave on Mount Horeb. Here, after this emotional roller coaster, God speaks to Elijah. Not in the noise of the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in the silence. Verse 12 describes it as the sheer sound of silence, a gentle whisper. So how does Elijah hear from God? Well, he may have been at the end of his tether in Beersheba, but now he has fled to Horeb, a place especially associated with God's presence. Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, is the mountain on which God met with Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. I think Elijah has fled to Mount Horeb because he's intentionally seeking God and wants to be in a place where he knows he can meet with him. Elijah waits and listens carefully for God's voice and he hears it, not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in the sheer sound of silence, the gentle whisper. Elijah doesn't hold back from telling God exactly how he's feeling. He's been very zealous, he says, for God, but the Israelites have rejected his message, put all God's prophets to death. He's now the only one left, and now his life is under threat too. You can sense the blame in his voice, can't you? Is this the way you reward me for faithful service, God? But if we were to read on, we'd hear that God shows Elijah that actually he is not the only one left. There are in fact 7,000 who haven't rejected God. He also gives Elijah a new task. And so Elijah, Elijah having heard God's voice, leaves Horeb with a fresh perspective. So what can we learn from Elijah about how we hear from God? Well, firstly, he goes to a place where he expects to meet with God, to Mount Horeb or Sinai, where Moses met with God. I find it quite helpful to have a special place in my home where I can get away from distractions and listen to God. There's nothing particularly holy about that place but I'm able to focus on being in God's presence. I wonder, is there a special place where you spend time in God's presence and are attentive to him? Perhaps it's a particular chair, or it might be a special seat on a walk. And if your household is very busy, it might even be the loo that is the only place you can escape to. But that's all right too. Secondly, God waits, Elijah waits for God to speak. I find that sometimes I'm impatient in my prayer time. I need to get on with the tasks of the day, and so I don't allow enough time to settle in God's presence. 
As Elijah waits, he hears God speak, not in the noise of the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in this sheer sound of silence, in the gentle whisper. Silence is a really important discipline when it comes to prayer. Sometimes we're afraid of silence, aren't we? We're almost embarrassed by it. But if we can just mute our phones for a bit, turn off the TV and limit other distractions, then it gives us the opportunity to tune in to what God might be saying. The time of waiting and silence in God's presence might be 10 minutes, half an hour or a bit longer. Recently, I found that a silent retreat is really helpful. And I found that I, when I go seeking God, open to what he might be saying, he sometimes speaks very clearly to me. So if you're in a position to do so, I really recommend trying a retreat. Thirdly, the conversation is two way. God asks Elijah what he's doing at Horeb and Elijah tells God exactly how he feels. As he does so, God speaks to him. God, our loving Father, longs for us to pour out our hearts to him in prayer and to tell him exactly how we're feeling. And as we do so, he may speak, giving a different perspective on perhaps a seemingly impossible situation or problem. I wonder what Elijah heard when God spoke. We may not hear an actual voice, but I find that God often speaks while I'm praying by putting a thought into my mind, shedding new light on a problem, or giving me a nudge to do something. Sometimes he speaks to me through a Bible passage or brings someone to mind who I need to pray for or to contact. John Mark Comer puts it like this. In our ears, we sense his voice cut through the cacophony of all other voices, which slowly fade to the deafening roar of silence. In that silence, we hear God speak his love over us, speak our identities and callings into being. We get his perspective on our life and our humble good places in it. The lockdown may make it more difficult than usual to spend time alone with God. But I would encourage you to be imaginative in finding ways to do so. Jesus constantly faced crowds which he couldn't escape from, and yet he often went away by himself to a quiet place to pray and listen to his Father. And if Jesus needed to do that, then we most certainly do. I wonder, could you spend just 10 minutes perhaps today with God, waiting in silence and listening, expectant to hear from him? I'm going to close with the words of an old hymn. And you might like to hear, to use these words or something similar as you pray. Speak, Lord in the stillness, while I wait on thee, hushed my heart to listen in expectancy. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for our church family and for being able to gather here in this way but we know there are others in the parish who cannot join us and we will pray that we pray that you will speak into their hearts let them know that you're walking with them and encourage them in their faith we all know two or three people in such a position so in a moment of silence let's name them in our hearts and ask Jesus to, to be with them today and during the week ahead.
Father, in the week ahead, show us how to make contact with one or two of these people so that they know we are thinking of them and praying for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to thank you for all our frontline workers and especially those working in our National Health Service. We may know some of those, whether they be in our hospitals, delivering stuff to us, working in our shops, working for our council and all the services that they offer and the other emergency services. So let's name one or two people who we know and ask God to bring them protection, to give them energy and to know that we are thankful for everything they do. Father, we ask you to guide our government in their dis discussions and their decisions, to bring them wisdom, to bring them to a, a common plan and goal for taking us forward through this, this pandemic. We ask that you guide our medics and scientists in the search for a vaccine. But we also ask for your divine intervention, Father, for your miraculous eradication of this virus in all countries around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all the efforts for Christian Aid Week this week, for those who've hosted events, those who've been raising funds. And we pray for continued generous giving to eradicate poverty around the world, to work to, in, to bring balance to social injustice, to petition to curb climate change, Father help us to know our place in your plans. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. So please join me now in the words that Jesus taught, taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.